When it comes down to modifying your cars, you pretty much go out onto the internet and you have a thousand people telling you what to do. They think that you need to get like the different headlights or that you need to modify the engine or you need to LS swap it because you LS swap the world because that's just how the world works these days. Or you need to get different like spoilers or you got to get battle arrow, you got to get some sort of splitter and this, that and the other thing. I'm just going to stop you right there, okay? That stuff is cool, but the stuff we're going to tell you is cool-er. This is the stuff that you're gonna like want to do before everything else. This is the preliminary modifications to the other modifications. This is the primary, that stuff is the secondary. We are telling you the most important, sophisticated, somewhat hyper excited, wrong word using things that you need to do to modify your car before all else. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries and if you guys haven't done these five things and you did five other things and you think you can remember the first five mods you did to the car that you own right now, feel free to drop it in the description and we'll happily tell you why you should have gone with coilovers as your first suspension mod or your first mod in general. Coilovers, lowering springs, air suspension if you're just one of those guys that manages to, to, to just have $3,000 for air suspension as your first modification. But coilover suspension, first modification, out the gate, number one most important thing. I stand by to the day that I die that a stock car with stock wheels with aftermarket suspension looks a million times better than a stock car with aftermarket wheels but on stock suspension. One of the best things about coilovers is it's probably one of the best bang for your buck modifications you can do to your car. And since there's so many different products out there from like $300 to $300, $3,000, you can pretty much get anything you could possibly want for your vehicle. If you've got a KDM, they make something for that. If you have a whole Honda, they have everything for that. If you have like a G35, they're gonna have something for your car because it's a G35. God damn, Infinities are everywhere these days. You're gonna have something for almost every application. And not only does it make your car look better, it's probably one of the few modifications that actually makes your car perform a lot better. It's gonna feel better than a lot of those saggy old style suspension components. And at the same time, usually when you're modifying your first car, it's not exactly not exactly a race car, is it? Usually your first car. Mm -mm. It's kind of like a maybe a four-door Corolla, maybe like a some form of old aged Buick LeSabre in an odd color that reminds you of your grandma's drawers. It would just be something that you're not really looking to, to, to have as a race car, but you still want it to look cool. That's why coilovers are so good. They just make it look sportier, it feels better, it responds better, it's pricing across the board. So like, if you're on a budget with the ramen, you can get something nice. But if you're a baller with like, you know, you eating the sushi to put on Instagram, you can get some air suspension and you're gonna have an improvement of ride quality pretty much out of the gate. The second thing is probably something that you would expect us to say from a wheel company, which is would be Wheels, right? The thing that matters most in terms of like pulling a car together is most definitely wheels and suspension. A lot of times when it comes down to function, it's gonna be your suspension and your tires. But at the end of the day, ha, I said it. I know I'm saying it, all right? I'm fixing it carefully. I have Mario spray a water gun every time I say it at the end of the day now because I said it like 67 times in the last video. But really, what it comes down to is wheels are one of the things that really personalizes a vehicle to the way that you want it to look. It's the best way for like people to see something on your car and be like, that's Jasper's car or that's Alex's car. Because even if you're not a car person, a lot of times people love aftermarket wheels and they especially love ones that kind of stick out a little bit and that are a little bit different. I have to burp. That's what happens when you forget to breathe and then you just talk and talk and talk. And at the same time, wheels is probably one of the easiest things to really come down to installing onto your car. You I mean, you unbolt them and then you bolt them on and you go into the forums, you go into the websites, you learn all the things that make wheels look good on maybe your specific car and then you bolt them up and you're like, hell yeah, that looks good. And a lot of times it's just a fun thing to purchase. I feel like wheels are one of the most exciting things to purchase because it's likely what you see the most of on any car. I would even argue to say that when it comes down to aftermarket wheels, you're going to notice that more than you're going to notice anything else when you are actually looking at somebody's car, even the wide body, the crazy camber, the crazy wings, all of that stuff. You're gonna notice that stuff, but what it really comes down to is you're gonna say, wow, those wheels are actually pretty darn neat. That's pretty neat. And when it's your first time buying wheels, I mean, you're gonna be excited about it. And a lot of times, even if you buy 50 sets of wheels and you're on your 27th car, you're still gonna be excited about picking up a set of wheels because it is such a cool experience. And probably when it comes down to car parts, it's the most diverse part you can probably buy. The third most important modification, which I probably would say is the second most important modification, but because I got so excited about wheels, because I'm getting wheels myself and I'm really excited for the car, it's gonna be look awesome. 
I'm not gonna tell you what it is though, but it's gonna be super cool when it comes in, is tires. If you want a modification that's not only gonna make your car feel better, but is actually going to perform better, and you wanna like hit the ground running and you wanna impress some kids, get coilovers and then go get some like Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's and don't get anything else. And just watch people get blown away at the fact of your times actually dropping during autocross and everything in between. If you actually drive your car more than just your Sunday cruise. Tires are probably the best thing that you can get for your car from like a function aspect, but just like eating your fruits and vegetables, not a lot of people like to spend money and time and actually enjoy doing it because not a lot of people notice modification to tires unless you tell people what sort of tires you have, which is kind of weird. It's like a hipster bragging about the fact that they have glasses that nobody else has. But then again, at the same time, that's pretty much half of the three piece wheel game when they talk about wheels that nobody else has. So really it kind of comes full circle, which is a little bit weird when I think about it and talk about it out loud. But tires, right? Tires being the third most important modification because they are what keep you planted on the ground. And if you're looking to really dial in the best things that are gonna make your car feel better, look better and perform better, you're looking at coilovers, wheels, and then you're looking at tires. But just remember that if you're gonna spend a lot of money on wheels and you save no money for tires, you're gonna be one of those guys or one of those girls. Don't be either of them because you decided to ball out on some eBay tires that you've never heard the name out of before because they were $60 a tire. Just don't do it. Even if you're stretching tires, you can still get decent tires to stretch that aren't $60. Like if that's your thing, go nuts. But just remember that, I mean, you're driving on them. And so if your tire blows out and then you ruin your $900 wheels, which ultimately ends up you running into a curb. So you end up destroying one of your like passenger side coilovers, which was like $700. Now who's the dummy? So you have the coilovers that are gonna make it like just feel better. You have the wheels that are gonna make it look better. And then you have the tires that are gonna make it just, mm, they're just gonna make it, ah, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> that's the dumbest shit I've ever done in my life. You have the next step, which is what's gonna make it sound better. Exhaust is probably the biggest thing that you could probably do to really make it all kind of come full circle for your car. The problem is though, is a lot of people screw this step up every single time. They get the wheels, then they get the tires, they get the suspension. They're like, all right, I am going to go cut out my cats, cut out my resonator. I'm a straight pipe it. And then you wonder why your Corvette now just sounds like this gargling pile of junk. It sounds like a five, seven Chevy truck that just has like a rusted out cat. And you're wondering, why did I do this to myself? Why do I cry myself to sleep every night? Why did my girlfriend leave me? These are all questions that can be answered by a terrible exhaust job that you decide to do for your car. There are proper exhaust setups that you can buy that don't cost an arm and a leg. And if you're willing to take some of the less than stellar brands to an actual exhaust shop, they will repair it, fix it, and actually get you the stuff that you need to include into the exhaust system so that your crappy exhaust is less crappy. You can still install the exhaust and it's gonna sound pretty darn good. But exhaust is like the thing. It's the thing that you do, you rev it. We all, we all rev our cars every once in a while. You rev your car, it sounds better. It doesn't sound like a, like a Dyson like fan that doesn't have the actual fins in the fan, you know, the ones that I'm talking about, you stuck your hand in it when you're walking in Menards because it was like $300. You couldn't even believe your eyes that there's a fan with no fins. It's pretty much like that. And then your car turns from that to like an adult because it got its balls dropped and now it actually sounds like a proper car. Exhaust is like the bomb.com and it's probably one of my favorite things to do to a car because it wakes it up and it's going to make it sound a million times better. Just be sure that you do it right and don't just cut it out because if you cut it out, you're taking a gamble. And I can promise you that unless you have like, I don't think there's any, you know, the more I think about it, I don't think there's a whole lot of exhaust options that sound good when you just tear out the exhaust. But I'm sure there's somebody in the comment section that'll let me know. The fifth and final modification is something that was decided upon, not by me, but the more that I think about it, the more that I would say I agree with it. And that would be something of aero. So if you have aero bits on your car, you're gonna have something like a front splitter, a diffuser, maybe a small lip on the back, uh, you know, a trunk or something like that. A lot of people assume when we talk about aero that we're talking about like battle aero, and we're talking about chassis mount wings, and we're talking about over fenders, and we're talking about wide bodies and things like that. And it really doesn't have to be that extreme. A lot of times when you're doing your first modifications to your car, you're modifying a car that is not a sport car. It's not something that has angry lines. I remember when I was modifying my 2000 Audi A6 that had the 2.7 in it, it was a six speed. I remember looking at that bean butt and I was like, 
It doesn't even have exhaust tips. How am I supposed to make this look cool? And you realize that a lot of people when they're modifying their first car, I mean, you're not gonna have the dual exhaust. You're not gonna have the angry taillights and the angry headlights. You're not gonna have the aggressive louvers. You're not gonna have any of that. You're just gonna have this round, probably grayish looking bean that you're hoping looks cool to some people and most importantly to yourself. But is gonna help give your vehicle a little bit more depth, a little bit more of like a dynamic that's gonna give it some more lines and ultimately make it look a little bit meaner, which is ultimately gonna go all the way back to the fact that you're gonna have a car that feels better, looks better, performs better, sounds better, and then is going to actually look how it's supposed to look because you're gonna be able to put a splitter or you're gonna put just a small lip on your trunk to give it a little bit more definition that's gonna pull the car together. Don't always think that aero means all the aggressive stuff because you'd be surprised at the amount of aero you can buy for a car that's actually pretty minimal. Things like lips or changing out your trunk or just changing out your hood can make a hell of a difference in making the aero of the whole car, making the aero maybe even with the front splitter or side skirts a million times better. So those are the five mods we would say that you need to do. Don't forget to subscribe and if you're looking for wheels, tires, suspension, all that good stuff. Anything from your lowering springs to air suspension, from anything from your 15 inch wheels to your three piece wheels, we got it all. Fitmanindustries.com, I'm Alex from Fitman Industries. We will see you later, peace.